Hello everybody and welcome to the Chrissy B Show and we are of course the UK's only TV program that's dedicated to your mental health and well-being. Well today we talk about gratitude and what better time to educate ourselves about its importance other than the festive period. So explaining the psychology of gratitude along with its benefits is resident psychologist Dr Audrey Tang. Resident family coach Sharon Lawton then tells us how we can teach gratitude to our young ones and Helen Akshad highlights the best feel-good stories. We also have vet Michael Lazarus with us talking about what Christmassy things we absolutely must keep out of reach of our pets. And we also have regular autism correspondent Anna Kennedy on hand to tell us what she's been up to. Now she's bringing on charity champion Martha Parr and performer Marie Gorton who'll be giving us a beautiful rendition of that age-old Christmas carol Silent Night. And at the end of the show I give you my tips on how to be more grateful. Now we've been told time and time again to be grateful for what we have, but what exactly is gratitude? Well, according to psychology today, it's an emotion expressing appreciation for what someone has, as opposed to a desire-driven emphasis on what someone wants. They also state that multiple independent studies conducted show that we can deliberately make our own gratitude, which can also increase our well-being and happiness. Gratefulness, which is defined as the appreciation of kindness and as an expression of gratitude, can, especially when shown toward other people, increase a person's energy, optimism and empathy. So how are you on Twitter expressing your gratitude? Attitudes in Reverse says, This morning I woke up and I'm grateful for my home. Too many people wake up every day homeless and lost. Please send positive thoughts and prayers to them so one day they too will wake up with a roof over their heads. Nugget says, gratitude is the best attitude. Love Tip says, feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a gift and not giving it. Ayesha says, I pray for things that will generally make me happy, a better person. Gratitude, compassion, humbleness, not materialistic items. So some very interesting thoughts there on gratitude. So now it's time to get input from our resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang. Welcome to the show, Audrey. Thanks for having me, Chrissy. So tell us, Audrey, about gratitude from a psychological point of view. It's, it's a very interesting topic because it goes beyond the usual thank you that you're taught as a child. You know, you get a present, you say thank you, someone mm. opens the door for you, you say thank you. Gratitude is focusing on the good that's happened to you, yeah. but it's directed thanks. It looks at the person who caused that good to happen. And that's okay. the most important because then it gives you a feeling that goes beyond happiness, that goes beyond just positivity. Mm -hmm. You actually think that somebody else's actions affected how you feel. And okay. this has huge benefits because what that tells us, not only is, is it that we are part of something a bit bigger than ourselves because mm -hmm. someone has allowed us or enabled us to feel so good, but that means we also affect other people. Okay. And that realization makes us think, oh, actually, my, my actions do have consequences. My actions do affect other people. And research has shown that it, gr being grateful actually improves our self-control because of oh, our realization okay. of the consequences. Yeah. It has a lot of wonderful psychological benefits as well. In particular, positive psychology, which looks at going beyond the, the good, it's sort mm. of thriving. Um, it tells you that, yes, it can decrease depression, it can decrease the stress hormone of cortisol by 23%, the latest research has suggested. Mm. Um, and it allows you to even forget feelings of, not forget, well, not forget, but move on through feelings of sadness. Because what they did was they researched um, patients with heart failure, and you'd assume actually, they don't have a lot to be grateful for, but after no. completing gratitude journals, they didn't feel their symptoms were quite as bad anymore. And that's, amazing, a, that's a big deal. Yeah. But the most important thing to remember is when you're being grateful, you are directing that thanks. And that's the most important. It's not just a mindless, oh, thanks for, for whatever, mm -hmm. but actually it's saying, no, thank you for doing this because your actual actions have caused me to feel this way or to have allowed me to do something I never thought I could. Yeah. And that's much deeper than just saying a, a simple thank you. Isn't it? What's also important though, is if we've taken the time and trouble to thank someone, but it's received in the way it's meant because gratitude is so deep. It's better that when someone says thank you to us and tells us all the reasons why we've helped them, we don't just sit there and go, oh, no problem. 
oh, it's fine. Because that's what we, <laughs> we tend to do. We tend to dismiss it. But actually, yeah. when someone's given us all of that, that is when those P's and Q's that we were taught a long time ago come back. And mm. the act of saying you're welcome implicitly implies that, yes, maybe I did put myself out for you, but you're, but you're it. very welcome. <laughs> And yeah. I would do it again. And that's really important too. I suppose some people kind of feel a bit embarrassed, don't they, about being thanked. And yes. Like but again, when you think about thanks um, or gratitude, the deeper form of thanks, someone doesn't actually need to put themselves out to do that. Mm -hmm. So it means they've really wanted to do it. Yeah. And by receiving it and accepting it, that's a wonderful thing too. And mm -hmm. of course, gratitude is so contagious. When you thank someone just for letting you out in, 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 in a car or something like that, you feel so grateful that you've received that, mm -hmm. that you will go and do it to someone else. So, and yeah. then when someone's been thanked for that act, they might think, well, actually I'll do that again. So yes. it's, it's a really- I'm Paying it forward, thing. isn't it? It is, totally. <laughs> so Audrey, how can someone practice being more grateful in general, do you think? Um, there's a great idea from the positive psychology and it's by Martin Seligman. And he says the letter of gr gratitude is a really good thing to do. Yeah. And this is looking at three things. The first thing is to identify what you're grateful for. Yeah. Uh, the second is identify who did it and why they did it and how they did it. And write that down in a letter. Mm -hmm. Now the third, it seems very obvious, I'll go and send it, but it's actually to hand deliver it if you can. Okay. Because then you go and spend time with that person, you catch up mm. with that person, and that makes an even bigger difference. So yeah. that's one way of doing it. Another way is actually um, to use one of the, either gratitude diary or a gratitude app. Because again, that asks you not only to look at what, are your great, what you're grateful for, but actually why you're grateful for it. It doesn't stop at the, oh, I'm thankful for receiving money, or I'm thankful for receiving a jumper, but it's, yeah. I'm thankful for receiving money because it means I can put it towards my holiday and I've been saving up to travel the okay, world. Okay, going to a bit it more goes, detail. Yeah, okay. exactly. And so you remember that more. And the last thing someone can do is actually practice forgiveness therapy. It's a new mm. form of therapy, which isn't just about saying, oh, I forgive you and um, let's all make up, make up. It's, it's much mm. deeper than that. It's about looking at the reasons why the breach happened in the first place, okay. but also being able to be compassionate and move through that. It doesn't mean forgive and forget. Yeah. It just means accept it happened and what have I learned and from it, with it yeah. and deal with it. Wonderful. Audrey, thank you so much, my Pleasure. darling, and we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you. Now, everybody, learning something from a young age can have lasting benefits throughout your life, but can the same be said about gratitude? Here's resident family coach Sharon Lawton on the matter. Welcome back to the program, Sharon. Hi, Chris. So we're speaking about gratitude in the family, but especially with children. Why is mm -hmm. it important for, for children to be grateful? I think we we'll sort of start with the gratitude within the family generally, and then mm. sort of sort of put it back down to children. So, I think generally speaking, when I'm working with families, and, and a lot of the the conversations that I have with families when I'm working with them, is that we can, without realising it, tend to focus on the things that we find annoying about each other, yeah. mm -hmm. or the things that we don't like about what people are doing. Mm -hmm. And then what that tends to do is we we end up in a negative spiral where we don't feel appreciated. Um, um, and um, that has a real sort of negative impact on the emotional climate in the household. Mm -hmm. So if we think about um, the importance of gratitude generally within the family, what we can then sort of start to do is to focus on the things that are going well. So for example, um, just thinking about saying thank you. Mm -hmm. And we might think, well, that's easy, right? Or we just say thank you for, for things that sort of go on. But I don't think it is quite as simple as that because I think that what happens is, generally speaking, we um, think, well, why, why should I say thank you for the things that the children should be doing, doing anyway, anyway. Yeah, yeah. or the everyday things? Or maybe we might not, it might not even occur to us. And as I say, and then that sort of mm -hmm. ends up, we sort of end up feeling taken for granted. So just sort of, you know, and research really backs this up, that by saying thank you to somebody and telling them why we're thankful for mm -hmm. that, not only does it increase the chances of that person doing that again, okay. which is sort of nice, um, but also impacts on that emotional climate in, in the household mm -hmm. and boosts everybody's sort of well-being and builds up our family relationships, which okay. ultimately leads to sort of our sort of happiness and general well-being at home. That's amazing. But how, how can, um, for example, how, how can you teach that to your children without being too overbearing, would mm. you say? Okay, so 
it has to start with us. Okay. It, we have to model it. Yeah. So we need to be what we want to see within our children. We mm. need to reflect that. So important, um, isn't it? Oh, it yeah, is so important. Example. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. Leading by example is that, you know, we, are th we often forget that as mm. adults, you know. So we expect our children to say please and thank you. But how often do we say please and thank you to mm. our children for sort of for the everyday things? So we can start off with re that really sort of simple, that sort of manners um, and um, having good manners. But remembering it starts with us. So saying please and thank yeah. you to our children. Mm. Um, and as I say, I'm remembering um, to say why it is that we're actually thankful as well. Okay. So that would be the sort of the, the small things that we could start with. Also, um, thank you notes. And that's something I'm really sort of quite passionate about, I suppose. Yeah because I don't know about you but I was taught to sort of always write a thank you note mm -hmm. at Christmas and birthdays um, and my two boys they're 15 and 18 mm -hmm. you know they I've sort of impacted that on them and they still do the That's same nice. oh. um, but it is important isn't it to say you know sort of be appreciative for the fact that somebody's thought enough of you to buy you something yeah. in the first place yeah. um, so there's sort of those side of things, but I've got a couple of sort of little faves, really, okay. sort of around um, I love your little, little tips Ooh, that you yeah. give <laughs> So my two favourite sort of um, family gratitude ideas, the first one is a family kindness chart. And the Ooh. second one is um, a, a family gratitude tree. So okay. the both of those, what I love about them is they're a little bit different to your traditional behavioural charts where, mm. you know, sort of it's maybe one person or if it's a couple of children, it almost like sets them up in competition with each other. Wow. Both of those strategies are collaborative. Mm -hmm. So what that means is the whole family is working as a team. Okay. And it's about looking out for those general everyday things that we do for each other that might get taken for granted mm -hmm. or just the kind things that we might do for each other within the family that we notice somebody else doing in the family or outside of the family mm -hmm. um, and both of those build up a beautiful picture visual representation of all of the kind things that we do for each other or or the the, the kind things that we might do for other people outside of the family how does as well. it actually work then just it's like a you draw something so the tree or? itself um, is um, you can you can if you're very arty you can draw a beautiful tree I mm -hmm. mean I've often drawn a tree and then either print off different leaves um, from the internet or draw okay. them and then you write on and it might be um, for or, um, uh, for, a, for a beautiful family dinner, okay. um, for um, um, Sally saying thank you for grandma's present, or you know, it could be anything okay. really. Um, and you start to build them up. You just stick them on. Exactly, and you build them up oh, onto the tree. Nice. And the star chart the, is just about um, creating a starry sky. Mm -hmm. um, and you just sort of randomly put them all over the, the charts, your black piece of paper, random stars, um, and it's about just sort of really noticing every time I might see, if we were in the same family, mm -hmm. I might say, oh, oh, Chrissy, I really noticed how kind you were in helping Mrs. Jones next door. I'm going to give you okay. a star on the starry sky kindness oh, chart. Oh, so cute. Oh, it's so lovely. I want to do one. <laughs> you should do one with a team. Yes, the nice. team kindness chart. And, and children can reward adults. Adults yeah. can reward children. So it really is a it's about a real collaborative approach to mm. focusing on what we want to see more of. Yeah, brilliant. And I think also so maybe it's important to say that, say if you are in a family that hasn't particularly shown appreciation yeah. or, or gratitude, it's never too late to start, is it? No. And maybe not to expect results immediately, just to be patient and keep kind of planting those oh, seeds gosh. if you like. Yeah and, yeah, and you're right, you know, from those little seeds, big things can grow. Mm. Um, and even if you just started off with um, just sitting around the dinner table and saying, okay let's have a think about three things we're grateful for today yeah. or um, ending the day when you're tucking the children into bed and saying let's think of one or two things that um, we're really grateful for um, just to start it's about shifting our thinking yeah, yeah. Um, because I think it's a you know we talk about it mm -hmm. but it's a bit of a skill yeah and skills can be learned mm -hmm. um, and the more that we do that the big impact it will have on our sort of emotional and, and yeah. mental well-being we do we do i think we really do have to remind ourselves to do these things because naturally for some reason our brains seem to go to oh, the negative so it, it's actually get that and make a habit of doing that because i even heard there were some studies saying that you know if if for example you write a gratitude a few things that you're grateful for before you go to bed mm. you actually sleep better mm. it's and it's, you know it, what's quite interesting around that is if we start to have an attitude of gratitude not only does it increase 
increase our own well-being mm -hmm. but also it connects into our individual happiness which feeds into society well-being as yeah. a whole so it's yeah. that bigger picture um, you know part of being that sort of something bigger in you know sort yeah. of in society we can change the world people oh we can one we little can. step one at a time <laughs> Sharon thank you so much always a pleasure Chris and we'll see you again very soon look forward to it thank you well, everyone, don't go away because after the break, autism correspondent Anna Kennedy comes on to share with us her latest developments alongside charity champion Marlitha Parr and performer Marie Gorton. But first, is this true or false? Being grateful improves your chances for success. Do you think you know the answer? Find out if you're right after this break. Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show, everyone, your TV programme for all things mental health and well-being. Now, before the break, we asked you if this was true or false. Being grateful improves your chances for success. The answer, true. According to the Journal of Psychology, studies have suggested that being actively grateful leads to increased happiness, performance and motivation. All things that, in turn, we should be grateful for. Now, gratitude comes in many forms, and here to talk about her contribution to the autistic community is autism correspondent Anna Kennedy with her guests, Marla Papa and singer Marie Gorton. Welcome to the show, ladies. Hello. So Thank lovely you. to have you on. So before we speak to you lovely ladies, let's first talk to Anna, who's going to be giving us an update on what you've been up to, Anna. It doesn't seem five minutes. I was here last I know. <laughs> just time just flies. And I bet lots happened since then. <laughs> yeah, the festive season, so we've had some exciting things that have happened. Um, so my very first um, Christmas light switch on, so that was really yes. exciting in Beckenham. Mm -hmm. And I took five of the pupils from Baston House School and they yes. really enjoyed themselves. They had a ride on the limousine. They were part Ooh. of the parade. <laughs> I had to dance with Father Christmas on stage. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Did he keep up with you, Anna? Yeah, he did. He oh, very good. good. Okay. <laughs> And then we did our very first um, autism friendly Santa's Grotto mm -hmm. and we were in partnership with Hillingdon Dads and Mencap. We had 110 families that enjoyed wow. visiting Santa um, they got lovely presents and you know what it was a place where they weren't being judged they could take their time and um, the children and the, the amount of messages that we've had they, they want to do it again next year. Oh, so it, it's the first time that we've done anything like that in Hillingdon so mm -hmm. that's something else. Uh, we've had our very first relaxed performance um, at the Towngate Theatre of Aladdin for a pantomime mm -hmm. so that was exciting as well um, and that was because of Autism's Got Talent and because they were so impressed with the, the performers that we had I asked them have you got anything like a relaxed performance now relaxed performances the lights are dimmer okay. uh, the noises are not so loud um, the um, the actual performers themselves come on stage before the pantomime starts and they introduce themselves okay. and the, so that everyone can see what costumes they've got on there's nothing of you know that's going to be a surprise um, oh. they've got a, a room where they call it a quiet room so mm -hmm. if it's a little bit overwhelming that the children can go into the room so we're really excited about that and they gave us 125 free tickets so oh, wow. all those families enjoyed where normally they wouldn't be able to go to something like that so it's just small adjustments it is. that can be made you know that what? makes it such is. a world of and difference and even they do it in cinemas now and in shops so it's yeah. just about just making small reasonable adjustments so that a family can really enjoy that's really good yeah so well I was, I, that was really really great so um we're busy working for next year already mm -hmm. so our first big event is going to be the ak autism expo and that's going to be at brunel university so all the information is on the charity website so that's yeah. www www.annakennedyonline.com Amazing. Okay, so you've brought on two lovely guests. I have. Just, just have to say, Marie's going to be singing for us afterwards, aren't you, my sweetheart? Yeah, for We're a going treat. to talk to you about that in a minute. But first of all, let's speak to Marla, because you've been through quite a, a difficult patch, haven't you? Can you tell us about that? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, the big, I mean, the a journey started at, with my son at a very, very young age. He was diagnosed at the age of three with autism. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you go through the whole barriers of trying to learn so much about it. Yeah. What I found really, really difficult was also the whole cultural pressure, mm -hmm. you know, based on mental health and yeah. anything surrounding mental health is mm -hmm. always a taboo subject anyway. It's obviously changed as years have progressed with so yeah. much more in the media. Yeah. 
but um, I think culturally it's been sort of still there and there's always that sort of mm. elephant in the room if you like. What kind of things did you face personally? With um, it was a lack of understanding okay. of what autism is because it's that hidden disability. Mm. Um, a lot of comments I've sort of encountered over years like you know there's nothing wrong with him there's uh, you know it's bad parenting and so forth oh, it gosh. was yeah so we I pretty much heard everything. Wow. I was very lucky that um, I think I was sort of right at the end of my tether mm -hmm. and I saw Anna on London Tonight because my son mm -hmm. at the time was getting bullied at his previous mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. and I, I, I watched Anna on London Tonight and I contacted, uh, I contacted Anna who called me straight back and um, Anna was kind enough to come along, this was like five years ago, mm -hmm. um, and give a talk about autism awareness and that inspiration actually gave me a voice and to yeah. to hear what Anna has gone through in her life mm -hmm. sort of helped me speak about my son's disabilities yeah. which I did and I became very vocal after that but we went through sort of as time went on um, I had to give up my career mm -hmm. because my son wasn't getting supported enough and um, I was offered the role as a charity champion and it's amazing. been absolutely amazing. I've never looked back. And what does that involve? Um, promoting autism awareness mm -hmm. and being very loyal to the charity. Yeah. I, I cannot ever <laughs> Mum has been great. You know what? She, um, I give her projects to do. So um, what yeah. happens is we have charity champions, and I give them various different projects, yeah. and they own those projects, even though they're working as a team. But mm -hmm. they're the coordinator, and she's really like the the Autism Hero Awards that was highlighted. That yeah. was uh, Marla coordinating that particular project, and it just makes them feel empowered. And I've seen a big change in Marla from being very, oh, very yeah. quiet <laughs> to like, you know, you know, I'm fighting about, you know, about my son. I'm fighting for other families. It's just like, you know. I want to raise awareness about autism and our children, you know, deserve the support, don't they? It's Definitely. Just and so, I mean, this show is about gratitude today, so I suppose, you know, if it really fits perfectly with what you're speaking about today, because you must be so grateful actually finding Anna in the first place and getting involved yeah. in the charity as well. And I can imagine how difficult it must have been for you. First of all, you know, with your son being diagnosed, you not knowing what to do, how to handle things, yeah. having to learn all of that, and then, but also facing that, that stigma from from people around you, but yes. then coming through that all, Most you know, with the help of Anna and her charity, that's, that's great. Most definitely, it gave me so much confidence. Yeah. And as I mentioned, I'm not how I used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly not the quiet person I used to be. Yeah. But through, through the charity, with the other champions, we've just formed such a massive and such a lifelong friendship. And there's such a bond there because we're all in the same boat and, yeah. and we've all met through the charity and as a team, it's, fan it's absolutely fantastic. Okay. Marla, what would you say to other parents maybe that are facing a similar situation that you did? Talk what about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't suppress those feelings. Don't feel that you can't talk about it. Contact the charity. Mm -hmm. There's always one of us that will be able to listen yeah. and try and guide you through the process, which is a very, very difficult and very complicated process mm -hmm. as it is. But you're not alone, and, th and that's what I'd like to say: is that you know you're not alone, and you know there are difficulties and so mm -hmm. forth within families, and especially within like within certain cultures. I'm not saying all families like that far from yeah. it, but mm -hmm. if you are, just reach out and do what's best because a person in all of this is a child, mm -hmm. and that and rather than give that child a label, it's more important to give that child love yeah. and support that they really, really need. And actually bring out the talent that they have, which Most obviously definitely. we have the lovely Marie with us mm -hmm. as well, don't we, sweetheart? Yeah. So you're gonna be singing for us yeah. a bit later. Um, yeah. Why do you like singing? What, what is it about singing that, that you love? It just really makes me happy, especially mm -hmm. like in the past, you know, when I've got bullied, I like yeah. to sing. It just, I just forget about everything. Yeah. It just, Makes me really happy. Well, I heard you practicing. You've got an amazing oh, voice. Thank you. <laughs> what are you going to be singing for us? I'm going to be singing Silent Night. Silent Night. It's okay. one of my favourites. So, so tell us about you, you and Anna. When did you, the two of you, meet? Um, first met Anna when I did Autism's Got Talent mm -hmm. in t 2013. Yeah. And I just have had a lot of fun since yeah. then. It's just 
been amazing or to have all these opportunities. It's lovely. I mean, it, Anna, it's great that you, you are giving these opportunities to young people because, like I said, you know, your son got bullied, Marla. Mm -hmm. People just see a disability. They don't see, you know, it's still a person, so much talent there. And like, it's like no one was really investing until... No. You came along and basically... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Autism Got Talent started in 2012 and it's just flying now and so many people are hearing about it. Um, only today I got contacted by a university, they want to share it with all their research students. Mm -hmm. um, so we are still looking for talent uh, for mm -hmm. our seventh show and the closing date, I've had to extend it now to January the <laughs> 14th. So mm -hmm. if anybody would like to enter Autumn's Got Talent, again, mm -hmm. all the information is on Anna Kennedy Online, the charity, and it's mm -hmm. created so many different opportunities, um, scholarships with, you know, we spoke to Maggie um, a few yeah. weeks ago, mm -hmm. and the kids are flying, and we've got people like Marie, you've got the album there, uh, Building yes, Bridges, so she album. was... Um, yeah, so I was part of this album okay. called Building Bridges. Okay. And oh, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> the pink card. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lovely. That was a lot of fun that so day. It, what's it like having been on an album? It feels really surreal. Yeah. I absolutely love it. And it was lovely to be able to do this album yeah. with other people Amazing. with the same. Well, congratulations. Well done. Oh, that's lovely. So, Anna, tell us future plans. Anything come up your sleeve coming up? Uh, lots of projects. Uh, we've got. Um, as I say, the expo coming up in March. We've got Autumn's Got Talent in May already booked up. Autumn Hero already Awards. Yeah, we're um, working on that already mm -hmm. for next year. We've got um, Zumbathon in April. Yes. So that's uh, that's pretty that big. That sounds like fun. Yeah, we've got lots of things. Oh, tell we're me about that in advance. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> we're a little charity and we're made of lots of little volunteers all over the country, but we work our socks off and mm -hmm. we just do that's whatever amazing. we can to raise awareness. And we're thinking out the box all the time and working on a new project, which I'll tell you about. Oh, I can't wait year. to hear about it. Yeah, okay, I'll try and get it to tell me off, off camera, but you know, <laughs> we'll see. Ladies, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank thank you. It's been lovely speaking to you. Thank Marie, we're going to hear you a bit later yeah, on. Marla, thank, thank you for sharing your story. I think it's amazing what you're doing and raising awareness about this. It's thank definitely you. something that we need to talk more about. And Anna, we'll see you very soon on the programme yeah. again. Thank you very thank much. You. Well, everyone, don't go away because after the break, we have on vet Michael Lazarus giving us his festive food naughty or nice list that is sure to keep your pets feeling merry and bright this Christmas season. But first, what do grapes, chocolate coins and mince pies have in common? Think you know the answer? Find out after this break. CB and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. Visit ChrissyBshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone. So now it's time to talk to Michael Lazarus, who's back here to educate us more on how to look after our pets. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Thank you. Nice to be back. Lovely to have you on. Now, you have been traveling, haven't you? Yes. Volunteering. Can you tell us about that? Um, so I went to the Caribbean, uh, to a few islands there for two months, and I was volunteering Amazing. at some charities, so doing dog yeah. and cat work. Um, okay. Yeah. What was that like? Then? It was amazing. I mean, we're in the Caribbean, so yeah. you can't really complain. The weather was great. The beaches were lovely. But yeah. um, we got to work with some amazing animals and meet some incredible people that you know have wow. dedicated their lives to to saving these animals. And yeah. It was just really great to work alongside them and just see what their life is like. You know, it's very different to living in London. Okay. So <laughs> you're going to do more of that, aren't you? Just traveling definitely, and definitely. Volunteering. I've already got some new adventures in the pipeline. So amazing. Yeah. Okay, so we did actually ask a question before the break, Michael, which okay. was, what do grapes, chocolate coins and mince pies have in common? Would you like to tell us the answer? So I do know the answer to that, <laughs> and they can all be toxic to your pets, okay. if ingested. All right. So, I mean, today you are going to be telling us about the dangers to look out for in terms of the kind of exactly. things that we have around the festive period, so take it away. Exactly, yeah. So I've brought along some foods with me and some plants mm -hmm. um, that we just need to be wary about when we have pets in the house. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through them, talk about them and what sort of symptoms you can expect and what you should do if they are ingested. Okay. Is this any pets or...? Uh, no. So it depends on what sort of, um, what sort of food and what sort of animal. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. Okay. Um, so I think I'll start with the most common um, Christmas incident that mm. us vets experience 
and it is chocolate toxicity in okay. dogs. Okay. Right. So I've got two things here. I've got chocolate and cocoa. Mm -hmm. What do you think is more dangerous to dogs? Probably the chocolate itself. It's actually the cocoa. Really? Yeah, because wow. it depends on the concentration of the cocoa, so the percentage. Mm. So this really nice dark chocolate is 70% cocoa, yeah. whereas the cocoa itself is 97%. Oh, interesting. Okay, so okay. there's actually a, a chemical in the cocoa called theobromine, and uh -huh. dogs can't really process that very well. Okay. Um, so if a very small amount is ingested, they'll start having maybe some... Uh, vomiting, maybe some diarrhea, okay. but if they ingest too much, then they start getting problems with their heart, so their heart rate, wow. their heart rhythm can change, Yeah, um, they can get muscle tremors, um, breathing difficulty. Um, basically what you need to worry about is the size of your dog, mm -hmm. what type of chocolate it ingested, Okay. Um, and how much it stole from the counter. Okay. okay. Which they do, don't um, they? Bless exactly. <laughs> I mean, we have some Labradors that will get into a whole box of quality streets. Oh, God. Um, luckily, one or two oh. quality streets, because it's milk chocolate milk, yeah, and it's yeah. covering something else, mm -hmm. um, it's actually not that bad. But basically, if you know those three things and you call your vet and okay. say, this is what, what he's ingested, he weighs this much, they'll probably have the records on the computer anyway. Okay. They can then work out the risk. So they Fine. can say, you know what, he might just get some diarrhea or, oh my gosh, bring you need to in. get to the vet straight away, we'll yeah. make your dog sick, and then he'll just have to bring everything up. So it's quite a okay. messy affair as well. Oh. Um, but but you is, love that over Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's, it's strange though, because they, yeah. they vomit, and it's vomit, so you're grossed out, but then it also smells like chocolate. So you're, oh, you're kind of confused God. about what's going on. Um, <laughs> okay. So that's the most common thing that we mm. experience as vets. Um, the next thing, with not, which not many people think of, is blue cheese. So oh. blue cheese, actually the mold in the blue cheese has a, what we call a mycotoxin, mm -hmm. um, and that can be really toxic to, to dogs. Um, okay. So if they ingest a lot of it, um, vomiting, um, incoordination, if they eat too much, they can even die from it. Wow. Okay, so Gosh. just be careful. Just keep with, the cheese board exactly, out Exactly, keep the, the cheese board away. Yeah. Um, talking of cheese boards, if you have grapes on your cheese board, Grapes, raisins, sultanas, currants, those can all be really toxic to dogs as well. Okay. So that's why I brought mince pies and Christmas cake. Christmas cake, cake Exactly. Yes. Um, so there's a toxin on some raisins that can be really bad for them mm. and it can cause kidney failure, so it's quite mm. serious. Okay. Um, so again, if you ingest any raisins, any mince pies, any Christmas cake, get them straight to the vets, will make them sick. Okay. okay. But the longer you wait, the more dangerous it is because then they actually okay. get time to digest it. I heard grapes are bad for cats as well, is that true? Um, they can be, but mm. it's just not as well researched as dogs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next thing, nuts. Mm. So it depends on the type of nuts. Um, I've got macadamia nuts here. First of all, they're really fatty. Um, so any yeah. f fatty food can be bad for dogs um, and cats. It can cause something called pancreatitis. Um, mm -hmm. They can get really bad diarrhea. Um, sometimes they even need to be hospitalized for a few days um, wow. because of that. Um, walnuts can cause seizuring. Um, okay. So you do just need to be wary, um, and especially because so many Christmas foods have nuts in them. Yeah. You might not yeah. even think, oh, let me give this leftover to my dog, but it might have those nuts in it. What about chestnuts? Chestnuts? Because people no. tend to use a lot of those. No, so they're, they're fine, but again, they're just a bit, a bit fatty. Right, um, okay. So a, a tiny bit of chestnut should be fine. Yeah, maybe um, just best to avoid all nuts just Exactly, case, that's right. the thing. So just be very wary about what you're giving to your dog. If you want to mm. avoid any problems, then just give them the normal food. Yeah. You know. yeah. Um, it's like, oh, it's Christmas, we need to treat our dogs and our pets. Exactly. We kind of want to give them a little something extra, no. don't you? But the thing it's is, not... if you just make a big enough fuss when you give them normal food, they'll be happy. <laughs> Um, and they don't know any different, do they? Exactly, so, they don't know any different, and it yeah. avoids you having to rush to the vet on Christmas Eve because they're really ill. Yeah. Um, and that's just inconvenient and expensive. Okay. So, yeah, just a bit of foresight and just avoid those mm -hmm. kind of things. Um, the next thing I've got, poinsettias. Okay, so if you notice on the poinsettias, there's this white sap. Oh, yeah. Um, now, that's really irritating to, to cats and dogs. Okay. Now, more so cats, because cats love to play with any sort of plant that you have in the house. I had a cat um, that used to sit, destroy all my plants. Yeah, just exactly. Just eat um, them, everything. So, first of all, they'll get local irritation. So around their mouth, that causes mm. hypersalivation. So you might see your cat that's drooling excessively and you say, what the heck's wrong? You mm. panic. 
it's probably because they've got hold of this. Oh. Um, and if they've ingested it, that can cause irritation in the stomach, yeah. so they start vomiting. Okay, um, other thing, if you have lots of lilies around the house, those are really dangerous for cats. Yeah, that, that's actually my favourite flower, and I don't have it in the house because of my cat. Yeah, it's like, exactly. They're just yeah. avoid them at, at all costs, because um, those can be deadly. Yeah, okay. yeah I heard that. Um, and then, obviously, other things around Christmas time, Christmas trees. Um, mm. The fairy lights, cats love to play with them, dogs <laughs> like to play with them. Mm -mm. Um, obviously the main risk is electrocution. So if they yeah. start chomping through rabbits as well, because if you've got all the cable, cables around the, the tree, yeah. um, and if you let your rabbit loose, they run behind the tree, start gnawing. Oh God. Yeah, it's not, it's not very good. Horrible to think no. about, isn't it? <laughs> also yeah. it can cause um, um, obstruction if they do ingest any of it. Yeah. Um, so that's something to be worried about. It's like having children, isn't it? It really? is. It is. Got yeah, to... you've just got to be careful of everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, some stories of cats knocking over trees and causing havoc. So <laughs> some people don't even put up Christmas trees. Um, because of just this. Cause, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the other thing, tinsel. Cats oh, love to yes. play with tinsel. They yeah. just think it's a toy. Um, yeah. The problem with that is because it's really long, if they ingest that, it causes what we call a linear foreign body. Um, so it gets wow. caught up in the intestines and the intestines start concertining. So they become obstructed and that's really bad. Um, okay. So they'll have to go to surgery for that. Oh, wow. So if you see your cat playing with anything, just look what it is, take it away if you think it can, yeah. it can be dangerous. Yeah, just keep an eye on them the whole time. Exactly. I know, I know some pet owners like to wrap gifts for their, I'm talking about my sister, okay, I'll just like, you know, tell everybody. <laughs> my sister loves to wrap presents for her dog, but how, and let them watch the dog sort of take off the wrapping yeah. and stuff like that. Is that a that's, bit that's risky? That's perfectly fine if you're, if you're there watching the dog. Okay. Okay, because then you can make sure he doesn't swallow everything instead <laughs> of just playing with it. Um, yeah. But do be careful, I know a lot of people like to put presents under the tree before Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if there's something smelly, some chocolate, things like that, in the Christmas presents yeah, and your dog gets to it, they'll just rip it apart and, and eat all of it. Okay. Exactly. Um, so just be wary of that when you're putting things under the tree. Okay. And also Good baubles. Um, oh, gotcha. Dogs just think it's a ball, especially <laughs> the glass baubles. So they'll just cute. munch into it and then the glass will just oh, no. yeah, cause lots of problems and it can That's also terrible. cause obstructions if they swallow it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, it sounds really scary thinking about all these things that can be dangerous for your yeah. pets, but if you just, you know, plan ahead, think what could be a problem, what's safe. Um, yeah. Avoid people putting drinks on the floor if you have a party. Oh, God, um, I don't want drunk pets. <clears throat> exactly, because that's another thing. Alcohol, um, dogs and cats are a lot more sensitive than, than humans and it kind of causes the same, same symptoms. So oh, drowsiness, lack of coordination, bad life choices, you know, those kind yeah, of things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just yeah. avoid that um, vomiting. Um, so just be wary, put your drinks on a high surface, make sure your Labrador can't get into it and just lick, lick the cherry. Yeah. Um, and also food that contains alcohol. I mean, these mince pies That's have true. alcohol in them. Yeah. Um, so they're kind of like a double whammy, raisins and alcohol. Yeah. So yeah, just, just be careful. If anything does happen, if you think your dog or cat could have ingested something, you're not sure if it's mm -hmm. toxic or not, call your vet. They'll know. Um, we also have access to a, um, a poisons hotline. So if oh, it's something that we don't know about, we can call them yeah. and they can tell us exactly what sort of symptoms you'd experience. Okay. Um, so. In case something has happened and your, your pet is already vomiting, is there anything that you should do like en route? Is there something that you should um, give your pet or just get them straight It completely the depends on the circumstance, mm. but the best thing to do is go straight to the vet. Okay. Um, there are lots of home remedies online for making your dog vomit, but mm -hmm. a lot of those are actually quite dangerous and they have oh. quite bad side effects. Okay. Um, so it's a lot safer just to take your dog to the yeah, vet. Okay. You give a simple injection under the skin, 10 minutes later they've oh. thrown up whatever they need. Okay. And they don't learn. <laughs> so okay. they'll just go back and they'll eat it again, <laughs> if, it again. if it's there, exactly. All right. Yeah. Michael, thank you so much. Those tips were so no useful problem. and I'm sure that's helped our viewers and their pets. <laughs> hopefully. So yes, have, hopefully. A, have a safe Christmas for your yes. pets. <laughs> thank you. All right, everybody, so don't go away because after the break, Helena Shard gives us the latest in Feel Good News. I give you my tips on how to be more grateful and Maria Gorton treats us to a beautiful a cappella rendition of that favourite Christmas carol, Silent Night. But first, which of these statements are false? A. Gratitude improves self-esteem B. Gratitude improves sleep or C. Gratitude improves physical health Think you know the answer? Find out after the break.
Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show, everyone, where today we've been talking all about gratitude. Now, before the break, I asked you which of these statements are false. A, gratitude improves self-esteem. B, gratitude improves sleep. Or C, gratitude improves physical health. The answer, none of them are false. According to Forbes, studies on gratitude has been known to show improvement of all of those things, as well as relationships, mental health, and resilience. Now here to tell us the latest in positive good news is the lovely Helena Shard. Hello, Helena. Hi, Chrissy. How are you, my darling? I'm very good, very good. Before you get to the news, this week's fabulous cakes come courtesy of our dear friends from Bridget Bakery of Covent Garden and it's their Snowylicious Igloos which consists of dark chocolate crumble, pear coulis and white chocolate mousse and a pecan and praline biscuit and the Santa Claus Christmas cake which is Bee Bakery's revisited Black Forest new creation from their amazing pastry chef, chef Baptiste. And don't they look absolutely beautiful, it's Helen? Absolutely beautiful. I love these silver little bits of snow. Yeah. And we have, we've actually in. done quite a bit with um, Bridget Bakery. We've been on their, their bus tours, their, their boat oh, tour, yeah. their bakery. And you can check those videos out on our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. Their stuff is absolutely amazing. I can't wait oh, to try that. I can't wait to try as well. <laughs> Fantastic. So tell us what's in the news before we get Gosh, to the cake. There's so much in the news. And there's, oh, I just, it's such a lovely time at the moment, festive time. Just really nice to have a nice relax. Mm -hmm. um, so great research. Something I saw which was very interesting while watching mm -hmm. the one show, um, interviewing loads of different people from different cultures, background, religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. And it was really lovely to see people being so different. They may not have been on a spiritual journey or religious journey, but there was the same feeling of love, happiness, kindness, togetherness. Mm -hmm. And it was just this sort of really feeling of warm gratitude, which is really lovely. And we're very lucky to be in a multicultural yeah. society here mm -hmm. in the UK, which is great. Fake designer jumpers. Oh. I know that sounds a bit strange, but oh. um, they've been seized, counterfeit ones. It's 120 of them. And they've been given to 120 homeless people. Oh, okay. They took the labels out, just something yeah, small. Yeah, so yeah. good, I'm glad they didn't throw them away. Yeah. Um, animal assisted therapy. Mm -hmm. As we know, it, it lifts people's moods. And for me, I, I, alpacas, I just want an alpaca. They're so beautiful. I saw... <laughs> That's a strange thing to want. I know, oh, they're beautiful. No, they're, they I, are, but I they think <laughs> they are so... Honestly, they're so cuddly yeah. and loving and therapeutic and well-behaved. Yeah. And they're also beautiful. And I just okay. really want to cuddle them. Um, <laughs> so, too, I saw Oliver and Jimmy and they, they're therapy animals and they go to oh, care okay. homes. Mm -hmm. And the the, the excitement, they all look forward to seeing these animals and they're all beaming and beautiful, absolutely oh, beautiful, um, which is which is great. And the funny thing about them, they're so docile in a way, but they're great at guarding. They're the best really? guarding. Really? Yeah, guarding animals. Um, they protect sheep and various things far more than mm. anything. So I didn't know that. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, quite weird. Um, another thing, reading about the cat's protection, again with animals, 87% of people who own a cat feel it has a huge positive impact on their well-being. 87 people, and you can vouch it for that does. as well. Lovely cuddly cats, so cute, cuddly makes me laugh, and I she know. just sleeps next to me every night. Oh, really sweet. <laughs> um, and something which I found very exciting, Dame Judi Dench is mm. now 83, that's not what's exciting, but yeah. happy birthday to her. I mean, yeah. she's just amazing, isn't she? But she loves trees, and mm. I, at something from a very early age, I absolutely love trees. I love the outdoors, yeah, and it's so too. good, and it's fantastic, but mm -hmm. trees just really excite me. Um, I used to cuddle them when I was younger. Oh, did you? Yeah, and, <laughs> and thank them. And those but she also is loves trees. She's got a mm -hmm. huge passion about them. Um, and she, for 30 years, she's allowed her six acre garden, six acre, yes, yeah, sorry, garden, to return to woodland. And okay. she, for, she plants saplings mm -hmm. um, for any of her relatives or friends who've passed away. Okay. So she's got, I don't know, Natasha Richardson, her ex husband. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like an extended family. Yeah. And there is a programme that's coming out in the next few days as well because they do talk to each other. There's a network, roots and fungal threads, and it's called the World World Wide Web. Wood Wide Whoa. Web. That's clever. <laughs> Which is really clever. Um, and they, they do talk to each other mm -hmm. and help feed each other and things, which oh. is which is lovely. Okay, Just then. quickly. Okay, very it, quickly, we've got to try it's, igloo it's and It's fantastic Santa. that at Euston Station. Lots of homeless people, 200 people have been enjoying 
lovely festive meal and oh, kept wonderful. warm and Euston station Brilliant. which is really great and now I really now it's time in. for these I think I've got have to do my first. spoon ready so first. these these lovely things here come from courtesy of Bridget Baker also known as Bee Bakery in Covent Garden and they are our snowy delicious igloos which apparently dark chocolate creme I don't know if I'm saying that right pear coulis and white chocolate mousse and a pecan and praline biscuit and also the Santa Claus Christmas cake which is Bee Bakery's revisited black forest which is a new creation from their amazing pastry chef Baptiste. Shall we dig in? Oh, I think I what should we try first? Let's just try some of this. Oh wow! Okay, let's try the igloo first of Ooh. all, guys. This is lovely. Oh, so there's always a surprise with bees. Look at that. Mm. There's always a surprise with bees um, things inside. It's never it's like simple. It's just something really beautiful, beautiful and gorgeous. Shall we try it, Helena? This is lovely. It's green in there. Oh my goodness. Mmm. 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 Mm. Mm. That is absolutely delicious. I told you, beef bakery stuff. That is so stuff. good. Mmm. Is that kiwi? I can't even describe it. It's just so... It's something like fruity. This yeah. green fruity. Should we try oh. Santa as well? Yeah. Is Let's eat Santa. Not, it looks toffee apple, but I don't think it is. No, I this feel, is a black forest. I almost don't want to... Sorry, yeah. Santa. Wow. But the moment isn't the black forest. Is it the black forest? It's like chocolate mousse. There's, no, there is something inside. Mmm. 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 Mm. Mm. I can't describe these. That's absolutely... You'll just have to try them yourself. And it's so light. Mmm. It kind of makes Ooh. you feel, not feel guilty, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so do try mm. these at Bees, Bake, at Bees Bakery next time you are in Common Garden. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Helena. And thank you thank very you, much Bridget. to Bee Bakery as well. And now it's time for my tips. So let's get straight to my tips for today on how to be more grateful. The first one we did actually mention within the program today, which is to count your blessings. Now this one is really, really important. And if it helps, do write these things down because we kind of forget to appreciate the things that we already have. That includes obviously the people that you have in your life, um, the, the fact that you have a roof over your head, you have uh, even at least your basic necessities. Maybe you're not where you want to be at the moment, but um, just, just the fact that you have at least the foundation, the basis for you to grow from there is already enough to be grateful for. And again, it's not saying to anyone that you should just be content with the minimum, of course not, but at least let's appreciate what we have and then we can build from there. Doesn't mean that you're not going to be ambitious or set goals for yourself, but always, always remember, you know, what you have right now, be thankful for, even if it's not much, but at least you have something to, to start with. So always, always count your blessings and also, um, appreciating the people that you have in your life is very important even that it's even your work colleagues not just family members your work colleagues your friends because you know some people don't have anyone around them that they can you know relate to or trust so if you do have those kind of people be grateful the second one is to write a thank you note so this one this one I think is really nice I you know Sharon mentioned it in in her tips as well if there is someone that has maybe done something that really touched you write something to them because it doesn't it kind of makes you for example appreciate that gesture but also it makes the other person happy as well and even even with emails if someone is really helpful acknowledge that and thank them so for example if some i don't know if you've ever contacted an organization that um, asking for something and they've said to you oh sorry uh, I this isn't my remit or I can't help you with this but here's an, another contact name or they give you some information that is really really helpful don't just kind of read the email and say oh yeah that's great actually respond to them and say oh thank you so much that was really helpful Th thank you for taking the time to send me that information because at the end of the day they didn't have to do that maybe you're a complete stranger to them they don't know you they're not going to benefit in any way from you know from helping you but the fact that they actually took the time to to do that for you I think that is something that you should appreciate as well and even the small things that people do for you maybe in your office for example making you a cup of tea don't take things for granted just say thank you for those kind of things and the third one is which, which I, I do practice this one is to keep a gratitude diary um, I will say gratitude stroke achievement stroke learning <laughs> learning things um, throughout the year I do have my my lovely notebook that I have and I write down 
not only my achievements actually, because sometimes we do tend to forget the things that we have achieved, I also write down my mistakes. And so you might say to yourself, oh, well, you know, that's really such a negative thing. I don't see it as negative. Every time I've made a mistake in the past, every time I've made a mistake this year, and I have made many mistakes, um, you know, I, I actually write down what it was that happened and then what I learned from that experience and how I changed. And you know, I, I'm actually, something happened recently actually and I really, I'm, I'm thanking this person. She knows who she is. She brought something to my attention that um, kind of upset her and I didn't know this. And she came to speak to me about that and I really appreciated that because I was able to see my mistake and actually, um, you know, change, change from that experience actually changed. Now, if people don't actually tell me or, or if I don't make mistakes, I don't learn anything and I don't change. So I actually really appreciate it when someone actually takes the time and cares enough to point things out to me. So, you know, write all those things down because it's like when you look back, you might say to yourself, oh, I haven't um, changed that much. I haven't achieved that much. But when you actually look back at these things, and I, I actually sometimes look back a couple of, I've actually had this thing for about five or six years. I look back at previous years and you feel so good. Sometimes the things that I've seen, I've kind of looked at before, I kind of cringe and I'm like, oh my God, was I really like that? Did I really do that? But then also I appreciate the fact that I have grown throughout these years because sometimes we can actually forget how much we've learned and how much we have changed. So appreciate the changes in you as well. Those are my tips for today. Now, before we go, here is Marie Gorton giving us a beautiful performance of that old Christmas carol favorite, Silent Night. And just before we go to her, if you have a story that you would like to share, don't forget you can get in touch with us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Let's go to Marie. Silent Night Holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild. Oh.